A great horse may be bred out of the dreams of one man. But before he's through, he's reached into the imagination of many people. They celebrate his great moments and are saddened by his misfortune. When it's over, they wonder how they came to be so stirred by an animal. All they can be sure of is that the horse brought them something, a kind of gift. Before he shattered a bone upon the Hampshire Downs, Mill Reef was already demanding to be recognized as one of the greatest horses in history. Jeff Lewis was Mill Reef's jockey throughout his record-breaking seasons. When Jeff and his wife, Noeline, had dinner afterwards with Ian Balding, who trained the colt at his Kingsclear stables, and with Lord Oaksey, the trainer could still scarcely credit the little horse's response to disaster. It first happened, you know, we kept him warm and had to send for the horse box. So we had to walk him from where he was stood on three legs across to the ramp. And when we got to the ramp, I mean, suddenly it looked terribly steep. And I thought, my God, how are we ever going to get him up there? And he sort of just looked for a bit and just made up his mind, I've got to get up there and two strides and he was up. That sudden, inexplicable accident wrecked the flawless action that stirred crowds and slaughtered opponents at Epsom, Ascot and Longchamp. It crippled him just as he was being prepared for another flourish of brilliance. Perhaps for his moment of vindication against Brigadier Gerard, the one horse who ever beat him convincingly. Milreef was lucky that on the morning of disaster he was being ridden by his stable lad John Hallam who reacted as quickly and gently as if his own leg had gone. Tom Riley, the stable blacksmith, shares the misery with others at Kingsclear. His murmured Irish chat had helped to calm the horse on the great race courses of Europe. Together they bring Mill Reef, emaciated and forlorn, towards the crucial operation. Plaster casts come hardest to those who've had wings on their heels. Only a surgeon can save Mill Reef, but the splints for his leg are best made on Tom Riley's anvil. The horse will be in great danger. He has to survive seven hours under the anaesthetic. If Mill Reef dies, says John Hallam, I'll never work with another horse. They had come a long way together since Mill Reef left his mother, Milan Mill, in the paddocks of his owner's stud at Rokeby, Virginia. It was here that Mill Reef first came to realize that he was born to run.
following the line That Pegasus began Watched by the seasons Gentle caressing hand See the star shine Sparkle in your eyes Wind flowing through your mane Sweeping through the sky So free and easy Carefree rolling waves And free Virginian days You are born to win All the hearts of kings And in every race you run You show that you're the one So don't be afraid to show your winning ways So free and easy Paul Mellon has created a sort of Camelot at Ropeby. The elegance of the horses is matched by the landscaping. But the same enthusiasm brings Rokeby other gifts. Horsemanship is part of Virginian life, and soon he will ride Fort Marcy, a retired Rokeby champion, savouring the memory of other days when the horse carried smaller, lighter men so close to his neck that their bright silks seemed like ribbons on his mane. They were not there for decoration. Fort Marcy won more than a million dollars. Belmont on Long Island is a horse player's battleground in the afternoon. Between six and nine in the morning, it's a place of more muted, more private excitement. Some expensive guns are being loaded and aimed. Down by the rails there's plenty of steaming, snorting activity, but up in the stands, Elliot Birch, Paul Mellon's American trainer, is as relaxed as the best poker player in town. American trainers are very strong on the clock. Elliot's no exception, but he knows how to interpret what it tells him.
Mornings start early at Ropeby, along with decisions. The two trainers and stub manager George Coleman are here to see the yearlings. Nursery days are nearly over, and soon they'll either join Elliot in America or Ian at Kingsclear. Paul Mellon has to take the final decision, as he did with Mill Reef, whose light and supple action was judged more suitable for the grass tracks of England. But even these experts won't really know until the horse is on the race course. Whatever you need for the horse, you have it. Well, at most places, you, you don't have it. And then the horse goes straight, and then you put him out down the racetrack, expecting a whole lot out of him, he doesn't have it. Yeah, you All these men around here, they all love these horses and they take great care of them, whether the bosses is around or not. Like, tell him something, Leroy. Right? Tell him how you bet your money, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to bet. <laughs> <laughs> tell him why you roll it in the window. <laughs> well, I roll it in the back to you. Go ahead, boy. I roll it in there, but don't come back. Rokeby is a small private world. So is King's Clear. Good morning and welcome to the morning show. This is Tommy Vance in London. Stay tuned because we have good music. <laughs> Starting off with a song from our studio group of the day. They're simply called Sweet Feet. <laughs> King's Clear's world is closer to the front line. And the racing page gets most of the attention. There's a lot of chat about form, about their horses, and not just the ropey ones. They count the queen among their owners. There's room for dreams, too. For Ian Baldings produced two jockeys from fledglings at the apprentice school. It's not just how well you get a horse to run, but where and when and the right jockey. 
That calls for judgment, a touch of diplomacy and a large amount of faith. Horses and sometimes owners need guidance. Sinbad, you come over here with um, Rita. A good trainer's presence can be felt. It shows as much at home as on the race course. A stable lad can be 15 or 50, and he can't always lead up a winner. But if the mixture's right, it shows. It does you good to scratch your back sometimes. John knows there will never be another Mill Reef in his life. Mill Reef is something special. But he still drops dung in his box and someone has to clean out after him. Whatever Mill Reef needs, he gets. Curious. Including oats flown from Canada at 50 pounds a ton. Better as she goes along, though, doesn't she? That fully a little bit stiff going out. Even dental treatment is no problem when Wing Hamilton can be brought across the Atlantic at a day's notice. He was once a professional boxer. But understanding counts more than strength when you take a file and a pair of pliers to a horse's teeth. Even that amount of care can't guarantee success. As a two-year-old, Mill Reef was beaten a short head in France after a terrible journey had taken stones off his weight and the fire from his eye. The gym crack stakes will see if the sparkle's back. Then a thunderstorm threatened to wash away his chances. Wednesday night it started to rain. And I can remember, it's the only time I've ever done it, but I really did pace the floor Wednesday night. It's the only time I've ever, I can ever remember not sort of sleeping. Oh, I could hear the water, because yeah. there, there's a river goes down below. Yes, yeah, that's And right. you can hear mm. playing, 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 and this rain okay. going down. And I said, well, this horse won't yeah. run. 
Paul Mellon, having flown in for the race, took the final responsibility. Mill Reef would run, or wade, or swim, or do whatever was necessary to cover the six furlongs of the gym crack. And just coming up to the two furlong marker, and Mill Reef coming up to join Tremblay, in fact to go on. And Mill Reef taking it up now from Tremblay, most sacred and green god. And Jeff Lewis striding away now on Mill Reef. He looks over his right shoulder for danger. He looks over his left shoulder for danger. There's none whatever. As Mill Reef making light of this rain sodden ground is positively gliding over it as he races up towards the line. He's still got half the fur on a run but he's got the gym bag absolutely sewn up and as he races up towards the line Mill Reef has it absolutely clear Whatever his triumphs as a two-year-old, for Mill Reef it's his next season that will really count. And before it, the daily grind of road work. With more than a million pounds on the road, head lad Bill Palmer needs to keep a watchful eye. Kingsclear needs to relax now and then, and do its own running. Mill Reef, having lost the 2,000 guineas to Brigadier Gerard, must prove himself in the Derby, the most difficult race in the world to win. The last century has seen ten King's Clear Derby winners. Names like Flying Fox and Ormond. The horse can only be entered once for this, the greatest classic. And if Mill Reef fails here, if he cannot match those legendary performances of the past, or this by his ancestor Hyperion, then the failure will leave a void that no subsequent triumphs can fill. Mill Reef looks ready, but Jeff isn't quite as sound. His right arm has been paralyzed for a time by a violent fall. No, I was a pretty well 100%, but then I'd just come back from my accident and I had seven-eighths of my grip. Following the line That Pegasus began Watched by the seasons Gentle caressing hand See the stars shine Sparkle in your eyes Wind flowing through your mane Sweeping through the sky So free and easy Lyndon Tree in the lead from Lombardo and Hermetic and then comes Mill Reef in fourth place. Athens Wood making a little bit of progress towards the outside. And uh, just inside the two furlong marker now, and it's Lyndon Tree in the lead from Lombardo. Mill Reef is third, Hermetic four. Then comes Irish Ball still making good progress. Lyndon Tree from Lombardo. And Jeff Lewis switching his whip, his whip hand there on Mill Reef. And Mill Reef coming to join Lyndon Tree. And these two, very little between them now. Lyndon Tree on the far side, Mill Reef in the sheepskin nose band. Lombardo hanging on an Irish Ball coming home very fast too. But it's Mill Reef who's taken an advantage now inside the final furlong from Lyndon Tree. Irish Ball still finishing fast, but Mill Reef going away from Lyndon Tree and then Irish Ball. And Mill Reef's going to win the Derby. He's left the line. Mill Reef is the winner. Lyndon Tree is second in Irish Ball third. This day will always be something on its own, an island of pleasure in the memory. A month later he must face another test, this time against the best of his elders at Sandown.
inside the final two furlongs and it's Mill Reef from Caro, Mill Reef with the upper hand now, the only three year old in the race, Mill Reef from Caro for France, then comes Keyside racing into the final furlong and Mill Reef and Jeff Lewis in perfect unison, they race up towards the line, it's Mill Reef clear of Caro and Welsh Patchen coming up to the line, Mill Reef wins the eclipse from Caro for France and then Welsh Patchen third. When I won the Derby, I had a great ovation. When I won the Eclipse, that was, that was the greatest ovation I've ever just seen in my life. And there was people shoving up umbrellas and waving papers right in his face. And, and I think, God, he'll take off. Just man just looked at them as if to say, well, I deserve everything you're giving me. And that's the greatest memory I've ever got of him. The golden run continues at Ascot. As they come towards the furlong pole, it's Mill Reef who's really slipped into overdrive now and he's absolutely cruising away from them. It's Mill Reef from Altis and acclimatisation and as they race up towards the line, it's Mill Reef, the winner of the King George and Queen Elizabeth Stakes, the comfortable winner from Altis and acclimatisation. Lester said to me one day, he's the best horse I've ever seen and that's when I won the King George on him. He said, when you come up, come up along the side as you were running away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's when he won the King George. Mm. He said he, he just keeps going. <laughs> just keeps going. The bold Lester is a crack jockey out here too. But with the cognacs and coffee, they won't let you forget that no English jockey, not even Monsieur Pigot, has won the biggest of them all, the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. They've got the pick of 3,000 horses to choose from, trained in the forest 30 minutes from Paris. Chantilly's horses still defend French pride, but it was the English that first trained them. That influence persists. There are trainers called Watson, Head and Bartholomew. People talk about Lulard and La Box. But the French flavour comes through, not just in the black oats they serve to their horses. From here, Alec Head will send out his brilliant filly, Pistol Packer, to spearhead the defence against Mill Reef. They will meet at the greatest race course in France, Longchamp. And there's a million francs at stake. That, as always, will be quite a day in the Bois de Boulogne.
Ian Balding says Mill Reef will be the first English trained horse for 23 years to win the Ark. I mean, you know, we drew 13. Then we would have said, well, that's the end of that. He stood in 13 as if it number 12 or 10 or 11. You know, he didn't care to for this 13. And, of course, that helped the jock a bit. But privately, Ian worries about the sweaty jam that is bound to develop on the sharp turn into the final straight. Will the little horse get through where so many have failed? And Jeff Lewis diving for the inside. Spot the sheepskin noseband as Mill Reef is through. And it's Mill Reef coming to challenge. Halley's in the centre. Pistol Packer putting in a great run towards the stand side just in behind his Caro. And it's Mill Reef on the far side. Mill Reef for England. Pistol Packer for France. Then comes Caro. Halley's beating Cambridge here finishing well. But striding into the final furlong. It's Mill Reef going to be the first in his trade winner for 23 years. He's there and Pistol Packer and coming up towards the line. Mill Reef is the winner from Pistol Packer second. That was, you know, the coup de grace of 1971. Paul Mellon returns from Longchamp with the promise that, unlike most Derby winners, no reef will run as a four-year-old. Not only has Longchamp's track record been smashed, but no other horse has ever won the Derby, the Eclipse, the King George and the Ark in one season. These foals have something to live up to. Paul Mellon, the coming season should be one to remember. The strongest prospect of all is back on the road at King's Clear. He'll be reaching for the greatest prizes in Europe. But first, there's a public gallop against two stablemates on Newbury Racecourse. Aldi, an enthusiastic grey, a Morris dancer, an ageing star of King's Clear, do their best. But they seem to be running through syrup as Mill Reef quickens away from them in the straight. The champion sparring is as deadly as ever. And now he's set for the Prix Ganet, a return to Longchamp. Travelling a racehorse has always been a tricky business. They much prefer their own four feet. On his first expedition to France, Millreef arrived looking like a whippet that had been out in the rain all night. Now he accepts plane travel as part of his life. The French can't expect air sickness to protect them. Yet at Chantilly, they still insist that Pistol Packer will give him trouble in the Ganet. Of course, both sides in this contest have always been pretty romantic about their horses. None more so than the Prince de Condé, a gentleman so certain he would be reincarnated as a horse that he built these extravagant stables to match the splendor of his chateau. Paul Mellon arrives at Longchamp to find that an injury keeps Pistol Packer away. But that doesn't take the pressure off Milby. Expected to show supreme class. For when he meets Brigadier Gerard, it will be at this distance. 
Mill Reef goes down to the start like someone who knows he is on show. No wonder Ian Balding says nothing ever moved better than the little horse. If he were running on water, he would hardly make a ripple. They're off in the Brigade, 2,100 metres, just over a mile and a quarter, and Mill Reef back in fifth place at the moment as Mary Slipper takes him along from Conquistador, Willie Carson, then comes Lester Pickard on Credit Man, just in behind him, and then, then Mill Reef has moved into fourth now, relegating Lombardo, Japanese owned now, to fifth place on his outside, then comes El Toro just in behind them, racing up the hill, and Mary Slipper, Tommy Carter, taking him along from Conquistador on the inside, then Credit Man, then Mill Reef, so British jockey is one, two, three, four at the moment in this pre ganim and it's still Mary Slipper in the lead from Conquistador, then Credit Man, then Jeff has eased Mill Reef towards the outside, towards the right as we see them now, but still Mary Slipper in the lead from the white-faced Conquistador, then Mill Reef who's moved into third now and coming on the outside to join Conquistador, then comes El Toro going strongly just in behind him, they're beginning to race towards into the home stretch now, and Mill Reef is suddenly taken off from Conquistador and El Toro, and he's striding away from them and Jeff Lewis a peep over his left shoulder and another peep and he'll need binoculars soon he's really opened up a gap this is the first time the French race crowd have seen him since he won the Arc de Triomphe and they're really loving this and they're giving him a great ovation and Mill Reef enjoying it too and he's opening up a gap of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lengths as he strides away you don't often see 30,000 pound prizes won with this ease it's Mill Reef and the rest nowhere I've been answering a pitch of this and I've worked it back with a thumb. It's nothing like ten. It's, it's fifteen. Mm, it's mm, actually fifteen. Mm, mm. It's just half a thumb off of fifteen, so it's mm. fourteen and a half lengths, you know. That was one of his greatest performances. So. The little horse now seems unbeatable. The French will surely be plundered again. The partnership's back at Epsom for the Coronation Cup. It's the last warm-up before the Brigadier. This should be a lap of honour, and not many want to take him on. Rounding Tattenham Corner, into the straight, and Bright Beam has been doing the donkey work for Mill Reef, now being passed by Homeric, as they're inside the final three furlongs, and Joe Mercer making the best of his way home now on Homeric, but Jeff Lewis poised in behind him there on Mill Reef, 15 to 2 on to win this Coronation Cup. Inside the final two furlongs, and Mill Reef ranging now, upsides Homeric. He's taken a neck advantage, a half-length advantage, and they're racing into the final furlong, and Mill Reef just with the... Nice, easy advance now over Homeric, but Homeric fighting back. Homeric fighting back over on the far side. Mill Reef in trouble, and Jeff Lewis has drawn his stick, and they're racing up towards the line. There's nothing between them. Homeric on the far side, Mill Reef on the near side. There must be a photo finish. He wins, yet that smile is a little forced. And the official time of the winning horse was 2 minutes 34. Mill Reef's strength had been sapped by a virus in his blood. A virus that spreads through King's Clear until only the humans are fit. Bill Jennings, a travelling head lad, has nowhere to travel. Brigadier Gerard should have the Eclipse stakes at his mercy. King's Clear's challenge will have to be shelved. The Brigadier may be distressed by the going at Sandown, but Mill Reef is immobilised. Let's stride along. Ian Balding just has to wait. And watch. And left to right, it's Charlotte Deuce, then comes Alonso, then Brigadier Gerard being tracked by Home Guard, and then Gold Rodden to the right. It's Lord David Blinkett for the first time, and in the centre, Brigadier Gerard bidding to make it 14 out of 14 as they splash up towards the furlong pole. He's clearly hating this ground now, and the Brigadier's heart's got to take over from his legs.
the Brigadier's heart is big enough. He stays unbeaten and ready to take on anything. The virus leaves King's Clear, but Mill Reef is slowed to a walk, a pulled muscle. He'll be at home when he should be facing the Brigadier at York. Yet at York, luck even deserts the Brigadier. The villain of the piece is the Derby winner, Roberto. Roberto hit such a stride that for the only time in his life Brigadier Gerard is beaten. But two more great victories soon mended that, and the Brigadier succeeded Mill Reef as horse of the year. Yet for Mill Reef too, that August was a wicked month. He looks fit enough and ready for his second arc, but that dream was to be cruelly shattered. If Mill Reef dies, says John Hallam, I'll never work with another horse. They're giving him a great ovation. They're really loving this. And Mill Reef into the final furlough. It's Mill Reef going to be the first thing you train with a professor. He's Mill Reef towards the answer. And he's slipped into overdrive now. And he's absolutely cruising away from them. It's Mill Reef. He's coming away now. It's absolutely clear. Back, absolutely sewn up. A long way clear of that line. Mill Reef is going to be seen. 30,000 pound race. One with this ease. Mill Reef absolutely striding away. Everyone at Rokeby, too, remembers those great moments. And they shared in England's concern as Paul Mellon flies out from Virginia. King's clear, he finds the invalid up and about. But he's, he's in great heart, really. Four days and four nights, he had a 24-hour watch on him. And the first night we didn't watch him, he was down. Watch him, he's going to be out the door. Come on, John. Here's a little bit of what he likes. More than most things. The ribs show what the patient has suffered. He was close to death during the five hours it took to screw in the plate that holds the bones of that leg together. Now the surgeon knows it has worked, although Mill Reef isn't quite so sure. Ian Balding's little army has to go back to war. Their greatest hero isn't with them, and he never will be again.
King's Clear Village is shared in triumphant returns. Their farewell is an even greater tribute. In this space, you know, all crowded around him, mm. 50, 100 people all patting him and... He wouldn't dream really about kicking the tail, tail or biting on just, it. you know, lapped it up. That's the loveliest yeah. thing I think about him was that, um... He had that lovely, just kindness towards a human being. Oh, you know, he, he was just part of the people, and he loved the affection of people. He's going to the National Stud, but visitors will still be welcome. I think it's rather nice in a way that the National Stud, the people who have really enjoyed him during his racing career, will still be able to go and see him. I think he'd die, wouldn't he? If his son was bled out in a field and they never saw him. He'll certainly be looking for John Hallam. And John will certainly be thinking about him. Dawn will be that much harder at King's Clear. That mill reef, he was something to brighten the morning.